Section 5.2 is about polynomials. Poly means many, and nomial means names. So many names, many terms. It's a collection of many monomials being added or subtracted together. Now, I told you I would clarify, I would restrict our uh, definition of monomial. And so here's the uh, more refined definition. A monomial still is a collection of numbers that is multiplied all together. So 6xy would be a monomial. There's no addition, there's no subtraction. Now, once you put all these other things in, it's not monomial anymore. But just that by itself, that's monomial. But the, there are certain restrictions on the powers on the variables. The powers on the variables have to be full numbers. So it can be zero, which means there's no, there's no number, no uh, letter there. It can be one, two, three, four, five, six. Can't be anything else. So that restricts some certain things. It restricts negatives. This right here, this term right there would not be a monomial. It also restricts like the square root of x or the, the cube root or some sort of root on the variable. Okay. Uh, it also eliminates dividing by a variable right here, divided by s, because if you divide, that's like having it to a negative exponent. Right? This would be s to the negative one, and so that would that would not work as well. Now, this does not apply to the numbers, only the variables. The numbers can have a square root. The numbers can be under a fraction. The numbers can have a negative power. Those don't matter. Just the letters can't. So as we look at this, let's go through the list. This is a monomial. The power is 3. It works. It's fine. This is also monomial. That's a monomial. Because they're all monomials, this thing is a polynomial because I'm adding and subtracting monomials. So it's polynomial, many terms. This one here, these two are monomials, but this one here is not because of the negative 2 power. Again, you have to have a whole number, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. So this whole thing is not a polynomial. It doesn't make the cut. This one here, this is a monomial. Even though I have two variables, it's totally okay. That's cubed. That'd be the first power. It's fine. This one is also monomial. Now, I told you square roots were bad, but not square roots on the number. If the x was in here, then it would not be a polynomial. But it's not. It's in front of. It's not part of the square root. The square root of 78 is just a number. It's just like 25 except for with lots of decimals after it. Something like that. So this one's okay. And then this one here, I'm dividing by r, I'm dividing by s. You can't divide by the variable. That would be like having a negative exponent. So this one's gone as well. Now, this bottom one, if I had flipped it, it was r over r over 5 and s over 6, where I'm not dividing by r or s, I'm dividing by numbers, then it's okay. It's a polynomial then, because you can divide by numbers, just not letters in a polynomial. Okay, now the last thing is, once we know if it's a polynomial or not, they want to know what the degree, and the degree of a polynomial is that it's hot, the is the number of its highest power in any of its monomials. And by power, it means the combination of all the powers that you see in that monomial. So looking here, the highest power in this one is the, the power of this is 3. Looking here, the power of this isn't 4 because I have an x here, an x to the 1. So my total of powers here is 5. My powers here are 3, here is 5. And here is, that's one and one, that makes two. The degree of the polynomial is the largest of these numbers. So the degree of this polynomial is five. Looking down here, I have x cubed z to the one, and just x. Here the power is one. Here, three and one make four. That's higher than one. So the power of this one is four. Now we're going to add and subtract polynomials. Each thing in the set of parentheses is a polynomial. So uh, here we're subtracting these two polynomials. Here we're adding these two. And there's a few things that we're going to need to remember. First thing is the distributive property. 
If I subtract, and there's parentheses, I subtract every piece in that parentheses, not just the first piece, but every single piece. Okay? If I add, I'm going to add every single piece, which isn't as complicated because nothing really changes when you add. If you add a negative, it's a minus. If you add a positive, it's a plus. So nothing really changes there. And the second thing that we're going to have to remember is the idea of like terms. Like terms means that that particular term, other than the number in front, has the same letters, and those letters also have on them the same powers. So let's take a look at this top one here. Here I have 5m squared. So the like term comes from the m squared. This number can change, 5, 3. m squared is, an, is, is a term, and there's five of them. So if there's three m squareds over here, those are like terms, meaning it's, this, it's a different quantity, but it's the same uh, idea here of m squared. So as I look around throughout here, I don't see another m squared until here. So I have 5m squared, and over here I have a minus 3m squared. The 5 and the, the numbers, again, don't have to match, but the letter and the power have to. They have to, or you cannot combine them. If it was just, if there, there was no squared here, those would not be like terms. I could not combine them. But there is a squared. It's minus 3m squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for like terms and do that addition or subtraction one at a time using like terms. So here I have 5m squared. The only other m squared in the whole list is right here. Now, this is 5m squared. There's no number out here that I need to distribute first, so it's just 5m squared minus whatever's in this thing. So if I minus this, minus a minus 3m squared, that's like adding 3m squared. So 5m squared plus 3m squared is 8, because 5 plus 3 is 8. Now I have 8m squared. And that takes care of those two. So I'm going to cross them out so I know I've dealt with those in my answer. Okay, moving on. Minus 2mp. Minus 2mp. So m has a power of 1, p has a power of 1, it's minus 2. So look down here, oh, there's another mp. Now, if this had said pm, it reversed the letters, that would be okay. Because multiplication doesn't matter the order. m times p and p times m, or 2 times 5 and 5 times 2, those are the same. So it doesn't matter if the order changes, the powers have to be the same. So mp, mp, that's okay. If there was like a squared on the p or the m here, I could not do this. They would not be like terms. So minus 2 mp's here. Minus, because this minus applies to everything over here, subtracting the whole thing, minus this. So now minus 2 minus 5 is minus 7. M, P. So I've taken care of these two. Okay, now let's go to the last one. Minus 6P squared. Over here I also have a P squared. So minus 6P squared minus, again subtracting everything over there, minus P squared. Minus 6 minus P squared is minus 7. And there I am right here. Now I need to just double check to see if I have any more like terms. As I look here, m squared, mp, p squared, those are different letters, different powers. Those are not like terms. That's why I wrote them in different colors. They're different identities. I can't combine them. There's no com more simplifying I can do. If I do any more simplifying, I've done something wrong. This is my final answer. 8m squared minus 7mp minus 7p squared. Okay, you go ahead and give it a try down here. Remember, you can only combine things that are like terms. So t and t squared are not like. No, they don't have the same power. There's no combining there. But 5t and 3t, those are like. So go ahead and give that one a shot.